welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and this is an exciting episode because it is in collaboration with my wonderful YouTuber friend, Letitia. She is amazing. She does everything in the lifestyle space. She does DIY, she does thrift flips, she does home decor, fashion hacks, fashion flips. She also has tough conversations about the ladies' space, and I literally just admire her to no end. We have been craving to collaborate with each other, and I think we finally found a reason to do it. So we came up with a fun thrift lift challenge. We decided it would be fun to challenge each other to thrift lift items that we had in our homes. So I am going to be collecting some items and putting it into a box and giving it to Letitia. She's gonna be doing the same to me. I have absolutely no clue what Letitia is giving me, so I'm a bit terrified but hopefully she's nice. However, I'm not being nice to her because I have some really weird thrifted items and I have had no idea what to do with them, so I'm hoping her creative mind can figure it out. After this episode, you can go check out her thrift flip challenge where she's gonna show you the full journey to upcycle the items that I give her. We're gonna be coming together and revealing the items at the end of this episode, but if you wanna see the full journey, you can head over to her channel to watch that episode. So without further Further ado, let's get into this crazy thrift flip challenge episode. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. You say that said. <laughs> Here are the rules to this flip thrift challenge. Items must be from your own home. Every item slash material in the box must be used. Items can be used to create several DIY flips and extra materials can be used to complete your flips. So I have collected a few thrifted items that I haven't done anything with. The first item being this candle holder. It's quite interesting looking. I mean, it's got a wooden heart shape at the bottom and then these long, I think they're supposed to be tulips? I'm not sure. But anyways, I saw them and I thought this could turn into something. I thought maybe something could be done with a bulbous top on it. But anyways, I'm giving it to Letitia so she can figure it out. So the next item that I'm giving to Letitia are these salad bowl mixers. They look like little hands, which is why I picked them up, but um, I thought this would be a really fun piece to add to the challenge. I have no idea what she would do to them, but hopefully Letitia has a handy idea. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So the next item I've included is this, I don't know, it, I, it, I guess it's a cigar or it was like a cigarette ashtray. Cause you can actually take this piece off very easily and you can actually turn this into a base. Like I figured that's a really good shape. I don't know how you would use this. Kind of looks like a car hood ornament, you know? What's the one where the, the person's doing this? Is that even a thing? I don't know cars, guys. Then the last item that I am giving Letitia are these frames. So I actually thrifted these for $6.99. They came as a pair. I'm not like a, oh, I guess it goes like this. Good vibes. I had thrifted it for the frames, so I'm interested to see what she does with this. Maybe she'll have a better frame of mind. Okay, so we need to box these items. Your writing is so bad. What a creative box. Does that not look beautiful or what? Thrift flip challenge. Look, we'll give him a name tag. Name him Thrifter Bob. Okay, so my package is ready to pass off, so let's go. Are you ready? We're using our six feet distance of cars to officially reveal what we're gonna be thrifting. You stay on that side! <laughs> what is in this? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this much material? You know. <laughs> oh my God, you would give me material. <laughs> A bucket? What is this? Guys, why is it missing a leg? This is the 
the most intriguing and exciting? Are these two separate pieces or is this one piece? Oh! <laughs> I, I'm the most interested to see what you're gonna do with that thing there, the candle, the candle ombre. Okay, so you have one week to turn these items around. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. Good luck. Okay, so it's the next day and I've literally been sitting on these ideas for quite some time. Let's collect our thoughts again about what Letitia provided me with. Starting with these kind of removed Ikea drawers. The inside of the drawers are striped yellow, which I kind of like. The backs are completely open, like the drawers can go back and forth here. We have this kind of uh, banana leaf print. It's a cool print. The challenging part is that it's not big enough to fit over something, but I think maybe we can mod pop something with it. I don't know. The next item is this metal bucket. I don't know what to do with this bucket. We'll see. And then the weirdest item of them all is this little uh, wiener dog eraser. I love the color of it. It's kind of like a pinky red and it's a little flexible. Obviously it's an eraser. So I figured what we can do is brainstorm some ideas. This is kind of how my creative process works a lot of the time. I need to start with paper and a pen and just start drawing out ideas, drawing out concepts, and somehow you just kind of end up with hopefully a good idea. <laughs> Fresh page. So the easiest way to come up with a solution for these DIYs is to think about what problems do I have right now and what needs to be solved. Let's think. Um, what problems do I have right now? These are the big things for me. Drill something on the front of it and then it becomes kind of like a cool display thing. Kind of like do like a, a puffed pillow, a stuffed pillow. Maybe we turn the dog into a knob. Well, okay, it is January. I put a monitor on top of it. Or you know, I have that Tilton yellow. I think it would be really fun to add feet to this. That is something. So this is what we're going with, a cool desk organizer that my monitor can sit on top of. I'm gonna paint it yellow, add the fabric to the front, and use the dog as knobs. But then the bucket. What do we do with the bucket? We drill a hole inside this. Does it hang? What happens when? I need coffee. Maybe coffee will help me. So maybe I glue this onto that and then do like a fringed light. That could be kind of cute. Maybe it's a wall sconce. Maybe I use this piece as the way to hang it and then we find some piece to kind of create an interesting wall sconce. We got a cute light. Let's go DIY. So the first of my two DIY thrift flips commenced and I started with sanding down the mini drawers to get them prepped to be painted. Luckily, this Ikea piece was made of wood, not your usual malamine, so that meant I was feeling very optimistic to use a simple 220 grit sandpaper to get it prepped for painting. From there, I got my workspace cleaned up from the sanded mess and it was time to give these drawers new life with a pop of color. Using the bright Annie Sloan chalk paint color named Tilton, which if you've been following this channel for a while, you will remember this color was a total disaster for me back at the beginning of this pandemic. Guys, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. I always believe in second chances, so this is it DIY friends. This piece did need about two coats of paint, but you know, at first glance, I wasn't having a bad reaction like last time. And while the bases were off drying, I got started on the drawers, removing the knobs, and then deciding what part of the fabric face I was going to use on my drawers. This was tricky because I wanted to make sure you could see that they were banana leaves, but I wanted some yellow to pull through and a bit of white. But once I figured it out, I cut a generous amount around the needed fabric area and applied Mod Podge to the surface of the drawer. Apparently I had a spectator at this time as well. <laughs> oh, sorry, pop pop. From there, I applied my fabric on and then applied a second generous amount on top of the fabric and let that dry completely. Good morning, DIY friends. So I ended up not coming back to this yesterday, but very late at night, I decided I was going to get the lips 
on the drawer fronts done at least that far so that today I could do the finishing touches. I love the profile on the front and these look awesome. I mean, seeing them this morning all yellow, I didn't feel weird about it. I I think this was the right decision, so I'm happy I went with yellow this time. But we do need to put a wax coat on top of it, so I'm gonna get going on adding the Mod Podge. Like I said, I added my top coat of Mod Podge to the edges of my drawer and got a clear wax coat completed on my drawer bases. And no, I didn't end up painting the bottoms of these bases. I didn't really think it was necessary, so I hope you all agree. Okay, so the last step to our drawer is this guy. This little nugget of a doggy. So I'm going to uh, see if I can cut it first. And if not, then I think maybe we're gonna have to go to some more extreme measures. But extreme measures did not have to happen as my scissors actually cut through the eraser dog quite easily. And just like that, I had two knobs and I was really feeling ahead. Or was I behind? <laughs> But while I waited for my edges of the drawer to dry, I was able to use my Ryobi glue gun to attach both the head and the tail of my wiener to act as pull knobs for our drawers. And just like that, I had these two colorful, one-of-a-kind desk organizers for my office space. At least for now, my computer monitor could finally be elevated to eye level, and I had a place for all my extra cords and other loose items underneath. I loved the banana leaf pattern on the front and the pop of pink from the dog knobs. This was such a fun out there DIY that I never would have created if it wasn't for this challenge. So kudos to Letitia for giving me such unique items. I was also so happy I finally got to use that tilting color in a positive way. The color really did add some flair to this little desk space of mine. Okay, so last night I got thinking about this bucket. What on earth was I going to do with this freaking bucket? Like I said before, I wanted to do some kind of light with it, but I wasn't sure what, and then it just kind of hit me. So hopefully this makes sense because I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is kind of what I was thinking. This is gonna be the bucket, and then I'm gonna have the light cord here, and then I'm gonna get a slotted piece of steel, make a U-shaped piece using slotted steel, and then get a piece of wood to be the back. But the back piece is going to be the banana leaf print. And then this is gonna get a dark green spray paint. I'm gonna spray paint white on the inside. Now, let me show you, cause I pulled out all my materials. I have my bucket. I was able to remove the handle off of it, so I have a clean slate now. I have dark green spray paint. Thank goodness I already had this. I've had this pink cord for so long and I've been waiting for the right project and I think this is it because look how beautiful it looks against the print. I love that. So I'm gonna paint, spray paint this dark green and then I'm gonna have this metal plate. I'm gonna make it into a U shape so then we can secure the bucket to the wood piece and it can pivot on that. So that's about it. Let's go make it. And make it, I did. First things first, I got my slotted metal piece cut using my handy Ryobi cutoff tool with a metal blade. I then used my vise to bend the metal in two places to make my U-shaped design. From there, I decided which wood piece I was going to use for my back. Aspen plywood scrap for the win. I think I'm gonna make it go into like a, a peacock tail to kind of give it some like something something, you know? So I got my plywood cut and then all I had to do was decide what angle would work to make my peacock tail shape. Let's just call it a triangular bottom. Let's go that way. <laughs> well, whichever way I went, I did make it back inside and modged the top side of the wood base, stuck down my leftover banana leaf fabric and used my staple gun to secure it to the back just like an upholstered piece. I even went the extra step to cover the back with the remaining scraps just to give it a little bit of a more finished look. And to make sure the fabric wouldn't slip later, I applied a top layer of mod to the front and sides and set it aside to let dry. Now onto my bucket. To get my light through, I needed to saw a hole into the top of the bucket. Honestly, I thought the bucket was way less sturdy than it was, so I was convinced my regular one and three quarter inch hole saw would do the trick, but I was very, 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 very wrong. <laughs> 
New drill bit? <laughs> oh, way. I then tried to use a small drill bit to create small holes around the area I needed to drill out, thinking maybe I could just use tin snips once the drill bit took away most of its integrity. But alas, that didn't work as well. Essentially, I just needed a metal hole saw, so I ended up purchasing one online from my local hardware shop who were doing curbside pickup that day. We're in! Wise words to live by, use the right tool, don't be one. Get it? It was a whole other level of joke. I don't know. From there, the finish line was so close, I sanded both the bucket and the metal frame so that my paint would have something to stick to and to remove any sharp edges, of course. And yes, that is sandpaper stapled to a wood stick. Am I a genius? I mean, probably, right? I needed to spray the inside of the bucket white, so I opted to just give the entire bucket and its brace a primer coat first. Once that was dry, I covered all the pieces in the color hunter green, and when that was dry, I finished the pieces off with a matte clear sealer. While I was waiting for all this to dry off camera, I actually added this picture hanging wire onto the back. I attached the frame to the back using washers and dome head screws, and to attach my bucket, I used three quarter inch stove bolts with a steel wing nut to tighten. And voila, what a cool DIY. With the inspiration of just one little bucket, I created this one of a kind industrial wall scones complete with a swivel head and beautiful pink light cord. I thought this turned out pretty darn cool, all things considered. I also ended up adding a small hook to the back just to hold the cord against the back, which is something I totally recommend if you ever wanna give this DIY a try. Hello? Hi. Do I need to get closer? Should I yeah. I'll talk like this? So, girl, tell me, how was your thrift lifting? I mean, it was fine. Thank you so much for giving me <laughs> pieces that were <laughs> unique. <laughs> there were some ups and downs, I'm not gonna lie. There were some ups and downs. Uh, I was a little like, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I'm so excited to see what you have to show. Okay, so one item uh, I have to show you because it's on my desk. So I ended up using them and turning them <gasps> into these like colorful office. Like I put my monitor on it and then now they're used for office like organization. And I use these guys as the little knobs. If I come over one day and that goes missing, <laughs> it wasn't cute? me. Is that cute though? <laughs> yes. So the bucket. <laughs> you really threw me for a loop with- Oh, I forgot. I forgot. You could have gotten away with it. I totally forgot I gave you the bucket. Okay. I just turned it on. Shut the front door. What? I gotta show Stefan. He's gonna geek out over this. You know, that would look great in like an accent bathroom, I feel like, and renter friendly. Fun. Yeah. But anyways, thank you for the challenge because I never would, I honestly never in a million years would have made that if it wasn't for you to give me that bucket and talk to me because I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like the brain development via you has been very great. Oh my God, stop. The pressure was really good. Good. Healthy stress. Healthy <laughs> <laughs> stress. When you're done watching this video, make sure you go head over to Letitia so she can, so you can watch her process on how she did her stuff. Cause like, I know you're gonna be hilarious. I can't even wait to watch this video. <laughs> well, way to go girl. High five to us, come and high five. <laughs> okay, stare at my elbow and you'll get it right. Ready? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> This is why we're friends, because we're such losers. <laughs> DIY friends, thank you so much for watching this thrift flip challenge. Now that you've seen my journey, click the link in my description box to go see Letitia's full journey on how she thrift flipped my items that I gave to her. I have a feeling it's going to be hilarious, so go now. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Give this video a big thumbs up and let me know if you wanna see more of these thrift flip challenges with other creators. I am certainly open to this kind of challenge because this 
was a lot of fun. I love thinking outside the box, so hopefully you loved seeing it too. Let me know, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.